Hey, it's Tesla Canuck here. Welcome back to another video. Today we are in the Model X and it's a 2017 Model X with MCU one and hardware three. And we're going to be talking about software update version 2020.24.6.4. And we're going to be comparing what the owners of older Teslas like this one with uh, that combination of technology. So MCU one and hardware three, what features do we get? versus owners of newer Tesla vehicles that have hardware three and MCU two. So there are some feature differences and we're starting to see that perhaps in a little bit more frequency now that uh, Tesla is ramping up the, the rate of its updates. So let's see what the differences are. We're gonna go through the release notes and then we're going to take it for a drive. Let's get started. In this release, we have most of the stuff that people are seeing on the newer uh, Teslas, but there is one glaring omission and I'm gonna talk about it in a moment. But first, let's start from the top. We've got the traffic light and stop sign control beta. Yes, if you have MCU1, you will get visualizations for full self-driving, but I say that with a caveat and uh, we're gonna talk about that more when we go for a drive. You, basically, you don't get all visualizations, but you get the most important, which is the stop signs and the stop lights. And uh, we will take a look at that together when we go for a drive. This is really exciting. So in this release now, you can, if you're following somebody, it's just, it'll go right through a green light. So you don't have to um, hit the accelerator or the uh, lever to continue your journey. That's very exciting. We've got some tune-in improvements. I'm not that familiar with tune-in. Don't, I don't use it a lot, but I've heard that it's a visual makeover uh, and also that you can play your podcast at up to 2x speed, for example. Walk away door lock improvements. This one is, you know, if you keep your car in your garage at home and your garage is locked and you just go out to your car, for example, and you don't have your key or your phone, then your car will be unlocked, which is fantastic because that happens to me all the time. Lastly, we've got the Portuguese language support, which is also fantastic. Way to go Tesla, being a, a global company and part of the global community. That's really exciting. Now, you may have noticed there is something missing here, and that is with the backup camera. And uh, this does not have, in this release, support for the repeater cameras at the side when you're backing up or when you're driving down uh, the road and you just wanna see your side repeater cameras. So we do not have that, at least not yet, with the uh, MCU one and hardware three combination. Are we gonna see that in a future release? I don't know. <laughs> I hope so, but not now. Um, another observation before we go for a drive is I do notice that after this release, the responsiveness of the screen is uh, definitely much slower. So I think, we are hitting the limits of MCU one and its processing power. And we're starting to see a lot more lag in, uh, in how the screen responds. So you can buy MCU as an upgrade. Uh, I believe it's 2,500 US dollars. Uh, so if you want to do that, you can check with your service center. If you don't want to spend the money, then uh, stay tuned for more videos because I'm not planning on buying it yet either. And I can keep you up to speed on, uh, you know, just how well the MCU one is performing. Okay, first what we're gonna do is we are gonna take it onto a freeway, uh, stretch your legs, see if there's any differences I can pick up in terms of uh, autopilot, responsiveness, that kind of stuff. And then we're gonna chase down some stop signs and some stop lights and we'll see how the new feature works with uh, MCU one and hardware three. We'll see if we have the visualizations. You can see right now that uh, hopefully the camera is picking it up, that you see the red light there. So it is aware uh, of these traffic lights and it is displaying them on the screen. So I know there's a lot of concern about whether that was gonna happen with MCU one, but I'm very happy to say that yes, it does. And the same with stop signs. Alright, so we're on our way. I've got uh, programmed in Best Buy as our location and it just it's at a snail's pace. It really the responsiveness is very slow. Uh, 
getting those uh, directions. So hopefully that's um, that's a little blip or something. But it took a while to load those uh, directions. All right, so let's um, let's do some maneuvers here. So changing lanes. I don't notice uh, very much of a difference. It's nice and smooth. I mean, what can you say? And it has been for a while, so not a lot um, to say about any changes to the feel of autopilot. Now, I do have it on Navigate on Autopilot, and we will uh, be taking the exit up ahead. So again, the AP within its lane is very um, smooth, predictable, as it has been for a while. So again, nothing really new to report. I'm not going to go through the Mad Max and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I've done that a number of times. I haven't noticed any difference there in a long time either. So uh, it's just kind of status quo. It's really good and quite functional. So uh, keep it up, Tesla. Okay, we're coming up on our exit here. Oh, that was a little abrupt. <laughs> okay, so navigate on autopilot. Uh, it just whipped me into that lane there. Uh, now take exit 90 on the right. Very interesting. Okay, we're going to cancel the navigation now. And let's go chase down some lights. I'm going to take it out of autopilot right now. Just till we get sorted. Pay attention for the visualization on these lights. I won't be able to. I'm driving, but... I have no doubt they will show up. Okay, great. Oh, okay. So here we have a green light and I'm using traffic aware cruise control right now, not autopilot, but you can see that it went right through the light because it was green because I was following a vehicle. And that's, that's key now, uh, which is an excellent improvement. It means that you don't have to interact with the vehicle for it to continue. As long as the car, uh, you know, feels that it's safe and that it can determine that you're definitely not in a turn lane. And that worked uh, really well. Again, you can see we've got visualizations of the traffic lights there and you've got that red line uh, representing that uh, the light is red and that's where cars are stopped. And also note with MCU1, we still have all of the uh, you know, cars in the visualization. There's just so many of them. <laughs> okay, because again, the light is green, there's a vehicle in front of me. I did not interact with the car at all in order for it to continue along. Now the trick is going to be in this kind of traffic to get a situation where I'm the lead car. <laughs> Hopefully we can capture that. If not, uh, I'm just going to explain what happens if there's no car in front of you, then the, um, the Tesla will want your input before it proceeds through an intersection. But I don't think we'll be able to replicate that. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Yes, we will be able to. Okay, so it's going to come to a stop here. And then what should happen is when this light turns green, instead of just going, it's going to require my input, either pressing the accelerator or uh, triggering the, um, the stock here on the side. Okay, so it does not move. I had to press the accelerator to get going. Once you just give it a little tap, uh, you can remove your foot from the accelerator and it will keep going. All right, so next up, we are going to find ourselves um, a community with some stop signs. Again, there's no car in front of me. Uh, you notice the Model X was slowing down. I had to press the accelerator um, to get through the intersection. Okay, what was I saying now? Yes, let's go find a community that has some stop uh, signs, and uh, we'll check that out.
We've had it into a community here with uh, stop signs, but I wanted to show you, remember I said that we don't get all the visualizations with MCU one and hardware three uh, combination. There's no garbage cans on the screen. So we don't get visualizations of garbage cans. I haven't seen any cones. So definitely we are not getting those types of visualizations. In my opinion, I mean, it's really cool, but the visualizations that are really important are the stop sign and the traffic light. Those are, to me, are the key visualizations. And as long as we have those, which we do, um, I'm less inclined to upgrade to MCU2 right now. Okay, we should be coming up um, to a stop sign momentarily if memory serves correct on this <laughs> yeah now this is a really good uh, uh, use case here so I've got it on traffic aware um, cruise control and this stop sign is way off to the right there but it's recognizing it like a champ and again uh, you're going to have to give some input to the vehicle for it to get going because <laughs> Well, for safety reasons. Okay. Now here we are at a stoplight. Again, we've got the visualizations. Whenever you're turning, it kind of <laughs> puts, um, you know, throws a loop in the system, I find. Okay. Normally I would have probably have gone before, but I want to wait for this light to turn green. I've pressed the accelerator and when you're turning I find you just have to keep pressing the accelerator and then you kind of have to in this case I think the issue was that uh, it thought the speed limit was 25 kilometers an hour <laughs> but yeah I find like when you when you make a turn sometimes you have to do more interaction with the vehicle before it just kind of continues along its way uh, let me know in the comments if you've had a similar experience, if you've got an MCU1 car and, and Hardware 3. But uh, otherwise, that's what you can expect. If you haven't gotten your Hardware 3 upgrade yet for your Model S or your Model X, uh, this, is, this is the state of the union. Uh, this is what you get right now with that combination of hardware. Hit that subscribe button, click the like button. Thank you for watching. As always, Tesla Canuck. Over and out.